Hey guys, welcome back. Last episode on the Subaru Forester. We unhooked everything from the top of the engine, um, finished our bell housing bolts, pulled the intake, pulled the torque converter bolts, pulled the engine out of the vehicle, and now I have it on the engine stand. So if you missed the steps leading up to this and you wanna see those, I'll put those links down below so you can uh, get caught up on the series. Um, so we need to start taking this apart. We have a Subaru engine with a broken timing belt. We're suspecting bent valves, or I am anyways. Um, I've never seen one of these break the belt and survive, unless it's the old 1.8 liter engine or a 2.2, I think, are the only ones that don't bend valves. So more than likely we have bent valves, not sure how many yet. Um, we're gonna have to get it apart. I do have a couple of specialty tools. I'll go over those in a little bit. Um, I use them a lot, you don't have to use them, um, especially if you the engine out, it's not a big deal. Um, you can use them, some air tools. But if you wanna take everything apart properly, put it back together properly and torque stuff, you might need a couple of these tools. Um, but I say let's just start tearing this thing apart. Um, I have a new bolt bend. Pretty much anything I take apart from this part of it will go into this bolt bend. When I reassemble it, I'll get it put back to this state. I may put this cover back on, but I can scrounge those bolts out of the other bolt bend. Um, this is a Toyota antifreeze jug, so it won't add any horsepower, but it might add a little bit of reliability when we go back together. Okay, before we can get this timing cover off, we need to pull the balancer off. Now, it doesn't really matter where the balancer's at right now because we don't go off the balancer timing mark when we disassemble these. Subaru was pretty smart when they set this up and the timing marks inside the cover, when you line all those up, you're not at TDC and actually all of the pistons are down a little bit. So you don't bend any valves if you put the heads on and you don't have the camshaft in the right location. So we're just gonna take this apart. Now this is where I have a specialty tool, slides into the balancer, I can hold the balancer. If you don't have that, you can use an impact. Um, I'll actually probably just use an impact, but we will use this to go back together and torque it. 22 millimeter socket. Now these balancers normally pop right off. Next up is the rest of the timing cover bolts. Um, all of them are the same, except for one down here is the same as these three bolts, and it goes into a piece of plastic. In fact, behind all the other ones go into aluminum, but they are all 10 millimeter headed. It's just this one doesn't have a step on it. The cover should pop straight off. Well, we got debris flying out. And now we can see why the failure happened. Okay, so if we look at this pulley here, we have some issues. That pulley is not centered up, all the bearings are gone. They're kind of scattered through the whole uh, belt area. This right here is the number one failure that I see with the timing belts on the Subarus. Um, for some reason, this cogged pulley builds up the most heat and it's the first one to fail. And I don't know if it's the sharp bend after the water pump, I really don't know what it is, but um, I will not put a Subaru timing belt back together without replacing this cogged pulley. Okay, I think our next step is to get the crank positioned at the timing location where we want it. Now, I have a socket that fits over the crankshaft and locks into the keyway to rotate it. If you don't, take the crank pulley bolt Stick it back in, you may have to stack some washers on there um, so you can turn it over. Don't grab this with channel locks or anything like that because it makes it difficult to get the crank sprocket off if you need to change the uh, seal behind it. So what we're looking for is there's a little mark right here by the crank sensor and there'll be a mark on the crank sprocket once we get to the correct location. And as you can see, as I'm turning this over, the belt is not moving all the teeth are stripped off the belt. So there's our mark, it's coming around. And that's pretty close to lined up. What that's gonna do is that's gonna ensure that all the pistons are down a little ways and that we're not gonna hit them with any valves if we line up the camshafts to the correct location. Okay, the next step is I'm gonna loosen the cam sprocket bolts. Um, since I have everything set up here still, the belt's still on. We know the pistons are down. I want to zap them loose with the impact. Um, they're kind of difficult to hold, especially the plastic one on that side. 
if you don't have a special tool. And some of the newer Subarus have an Al Allen on these, but these are 17. And I don't want to take it all the way out yet. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the belt off. Um, there's not much left of it, so we can just cut it. Um, if your belt is still intact, then what I normally do is I pull this sprocket off or this pulley down here off first. That relieves a little bit of tension. And then I pop this one off. That releases most of the other tension because um, I don't like pulling the tensioner because it's normally still pushing down and it tries to rip the last couple of threads out if you take this bolt loose first. Now this lower pulley is different than the upper. Um, sometimes the kits that you get, they'll have the same pulley, but the lower one normally has that little lip on the inside edge. And that's just to uh, guide the timing belt, make sure everything stays lined up. I believe the fasteners for both of those are identical. This guy, nothing left of that. So ball bearings all over the place. We'll have to clean all that stuff up before we can go back together. Um, Water pump spins all right, but normally I replace that with the timing belt kit. Okay, next I want to get the camshafts in a position where they're not under tension. Um, whether you line them back up, actually if you line them both up to the timing mark, one of them will be under tension. So like right there, I can move it around. It's not under tension right there. So that's where I want to be because when we take the rocker arms off, I don't want tension on it. Um, the other camshaft, it's kind of bound up. We may have to pull the valve cover off on that side and inspect what we're working with first, um, we might have some bent valves over there. So five bolts holding that valve cover on. Pop it loose. Sometimes you have to get a little pry bar in there. Um, the gasket may or may not stick to the valve cover, it may stick to the cylinder head. Yeah, sticking to the head. So we'll go ahead and pull that off of there. We won't be reusing that. Spark plug tube seals, we'll pull those off as well. Those won't be reused. Okay, now I was just gonna look and see if I can see obvious um, mechanical binding in here before I try to put a wrench on this camshaft sprocket and spin it over by hand. I don't see anything in there. So I'd like to get it to a position, okay, there we go. Right there is a position where I don't have a whole lot of uh, mechanical binding. And right there is where the timing mark lines up with the uh, you know, 12 o'clock position on the cam sprocket. So I'm gonna pull the rocker arms off, which my valve clearances seem okay on this side. That one seems a little loose. So it's possible those valves are bent. So when we pull these rocker arms off, we don't want any tension on the rocker arms. So in that position where I'm at, all of them have a little bit of play. 12 millimeter bolts, leave the 10 millimeter ones in the middle alone. If you're working on a 06 or newer, um, there is gonna be a spring mechanism on the intake camshaft that you need to release first. Now I try to keep these side specific. You wanna put them back in the same location. So I'm just gonna put this in the valve cover that I took off of this side because the other valve cover has the oil fill on it. If you need to mark it, go ahead and mark it. Okay, now the camshaft spins freely. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and zip the bolt out of the front of the camshaft sprocket. Just makes it a little easier when it's held down. Uh, it's a little hard to see because it's so dirty, but there's two 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold this little plastic cover in place. Plenty of Loctite holding those on. Um, we want this 
piece of plastic off of there because it attaches to the cylinder head and to the block and we'll break it if we don't take it off now. So I think what we'll do actually before we take this head off, I wanna take the rocker arms and everything off of the other side and then we can uh, make sure all the valves are closed and we can do a quick leak down test on the engine, find out how many of the valves are actually bent. Now that I have the rocker arms off of both sides, um, it's easy to do a leak down test now the crank may move and most likely it will. Um, that's why I wanted to make sure the rocker arms were off of both sides to prevent any chances of, you know, me smacking valves that aren't bent with the pistons. So I pulled out all the spark plugs. I'm gonna grab our cylinder leak down tester and I'll give you guys a quick rundown on the cylinder leak down tester in case you have not used one in the past. So cylinder leak down tester, um, injects a, a metered amount of air into the cylinder. And what it is, is we have a gauge for our inlet pressure. We have a gauge on our outlet and there's a orifice of some sort in between the two. Um, so what we'll do is we'll hook this up to air and I'll turn this up to where it's at zero here. Um, I'm not exactly sure why we have inlet and outlet, but we'll make sure that it says zero on here and then we'll connect this to a cylinder and we'll see how much leakage we get. And if we do get leakage, we'll listen to see where it's coming from. Okay, so we're around 100 PSI over here and it's real close to the zero there. Go ahead and hook it up to this cylinder. Now the crankshaft is most likely gonna roll. Yep, it did. And we'll wait until pressure builds up. And although our leak down is actually pretty good, um, it's showing about 20%. I can hear air leaking out of the intake valves. And there's actually some oil in there that is bubbling. So there was a little bit of oil pulled up on the valve and it is bubbling and spraying all over the place. Now, I also hear some hissing from down here at the exhaust port. So that's a pretty good indication that we have bent intake and exhaust valves on that cylinder. Now it's possible we could put it together and it would run okay and maybe seal up, but we don't wanna take any chances if we have the heads off for other work. Um, so we'll be replacing the least valves on that cylinder. Let's go ahead and check the next one. Now I'm suspecting the piston is probably in the uppermost position at the moment. So it's probably gonna flip that crank around again and it did. So this one's actually a little lower, just below 20%, still gurgling out the intake. Still feel a little air out the exhaust. Now this back cylinder over here is about 15%. Um, I don't hear anything coming out the intake. I feel a little coming out the exhaust. Last one here, and we'll rip the heads off. That one's around 20. Um, this one didn't have the oil residue in the, in the ports. I can feel a little bit of air coming out the intake and a little out the exhaust. So there's a good indication right there that um, every single cylinder has at least one bent valve. Okay, we know we have bent valves. Uh, we know the head gaskets are leaking. Let's go ahead and finish tearing this apart. Um, before I start unbolting this head, I'm just gonna do this one because it's closest to me. Um, I do need to pull this sprocket off and then this timing cover off. Now the cam sensor, we'll take that off before we send it to the engine shop. And uh, let's just start ripping it apart. Should have three bolts in here. Oil dipstick tube is attached to the cylinder head. You just swing that out of the way. Um, that should be it for anything else attached to the head. Um, bracket wise, it's gonna prevent us from taking it off. Um, while it's sitting here, we may as well pull the cam sensor out. One bolt holds the cam sensor into the bracket. 
Now, depending on your machine shop, they may or may not want that bracket on there. Um, sometimes I pull it off, but I'll leave it on there. We should be okay. Now, I probably won't remove the camshaft. I'll leave it in there. Um, if you want to pull the camshaft off, you have to take this other plate off. There's some bigger torques and some smaller torques, and that's all held together with uh, RTV. So if you do separate that, make sure you have the stuff to seal it back up. So the next step is taking the head bolts out. Now I'm gonna try it with an impact. Um, it normally doesn't work because the head bolts are so long, they just rattle and flex. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a bash. Uh, we might get lucky. Um, if you can't get them to break loose with an impact, you have to use a breaker bar. That's where the engine stand is kind of nice. Yeah, that one's not gonna come out. That one won't come out. Yeah, grab the breaker bar. This is why I prefer to do them in the vehicle. Um, they're just nice and stable in the vehicle. It's a little faster for me to do it that way. Now these are a 14 millimeter 12 point. Um, I'm using a semi-deep socket from Snap-on, S6214. Get my drain pan in place in case I leak a bunch. So right now it's kind of sitting on the bolts. They're going into the block. Um, they're unthreaded all the way but I'm just gonna lift the head off with all the bolts in place. Oh, we got one not quite unthreaded all the way. Make a liar out of me. We got junk falling in there. We'll have to make sure to clean all this stuff out before we go back together. Okay, right here is our next indication of piston to valve um, contact. Right here, right here, there and there, I have a tiny silver mark. The silver marks are where the valves smacked into the piston. Um, I can see the same thing, at least on the intake side of this cylinder. So, you know, there's more evidence of that contact. Okay, so we have this thing all torn apart now. Um, we found out what our failure was, the cogged pulley on the timing belt grenaded, and then they kept driving it. It was probably making a lot of noise. The belt stripped a bunch of teeth off, caused the belt to jump, bent the valves. Um, we proved it by doing the leak down test with the rocker arms off. We had air leaking out of intake and exhaust ports on most of the cylinders. Pulled the heads off, there are contact marks on the pistons. We know the valves hit. Even though they're not completely bent out of shape, um, they are sealing mostly, but I guarantee you they're bent. Um, so we need to get some valves ordered, some gaskets ordered, timing belt component kit and water pump ordered, and head to the machine shop. So hopefully my machine guy is open tomorrow and I can get parts. Um, if not, it'll be next week, but hopefully this will all come out in a series. Um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, comments, put those down below. Um, if you like the video series so far, like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see the rest of the stuff coming out, make sure you subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.